Good afternoon, and thank you for attending the Great Backyard Bird Count. This is the first program in SSU's Center for Environmental Inquiries Spring Dig into Nature virtual series. My name is Margot Rollins, and I'm a program coordinator with the center. Until COVID hit us, oh God, almost a year ago now, all of our programs were held at either our Osborne Preserve in Sonoma Mountain or in uh, the Galbraith Preserve up in Mendocino County. And we really miss having people on the preserves, but it's really been quite a trip having these be virtual. We've reached such a larger audience uh, and children and all sorts of fun people. Uh, we'd usually pass around a sign-in sheet, but in lieu of that, can everyone just take a minute and put your name into the chat so we know who is actually here? Thanks, I appreciate that. Before I let our presenter take it away, I just want to tell you just a little bit about the center and how we can be a resource to you. Um, it doesn't really matter your relationship. You don't need to have a relationship with the university. You can be a community member. You can be an educator in another system, um, a government employee. It doesn't really matter. The center is here to help the North Bay create, work together to, to find sustainable environmental solutions. And we invite you to get environmentally ready with us. We're building a community of learners and problem solvers across all sectors of society by providing enhanced understanding of connection with the environment and skill building experiences that lead towards sustainable solutions. Today, we're gonna to engage in a little bit of citizen science. And that's going to inform the national, well, actually international, understanding of bird populations. And we hope that you'll have fun and go off on your own over this long weekend to join in the Great Backyard Bird Count. Our leader today is Maricela de Santa Ana, She's the president of the Peregrine Audubon Society chapter in Ukiah and a wildlife biologist with the Willits Mitigation Project through the Mendocino County Resource Conservation District. Kind of a mouthful, but that's but what she is. And this is what we call a local nature format. So Maricela will present for about 30 minutes and then we're gonna send all, all of us, she's gonna send us all out into our immediate neighborhoods or our closest window to look for birds and identify and count them and hopefully put them all into eBird. She, in my email to all of you who registered, I, I, I mentioned her interest in having us all sign up for eBird and hope that most of you've had a chance. If you haven't, you can, she'll explain this too, but you can enter the data later, later into eBird if you don't have it on your smartphone. And before we go out, She's gonna open it up for a few questions. We have to be out for 15 minutes in order to qualify as a count. So we're gonna, may have to cut that short. We may have to answer some of the questions afterwards. But if you have questions about the process and how to count and how to work within uh, eBird, you can ask her that before we go out. And the program will end right at three o'clock, uh, but we will, Maricela and I will stay on Zoom for another 15 minutes or so if there are questions that you all have that you need her help with. So I've muted you all and turned off your video. I think it doesn't look like I actually have. Um, I think everybody's muted. Your video doesn't have to be off actually, unless, except it does eat up our bandwidth. Um, well, we're not gonna worry about that right now. And um, so if you have any issues, like you can't hear us, put those or something like that, put it into the chat. I will be monitoring the chat for Maricela. And if you have clarifying questions, put those in there. For general questions, enter them as you, as you wish. And we'll get to them if they fit into the context of her presentation. Otherwise, we'll answer those questions just before we go out into the field. This is being recorded and it'll be posted on our website, cei.sonoma.edu slash calendar slash past events shortly, probably within uh, a week, and I'll let you know when it goes up. So Maricela, it is now to you, take it away. All right, thank you. And I will share my screen. And oops, not that one. <laughs> All right, can everyone see that? Margo, can you see that? No. So I'm not sure why. Okay, there we go. Should be this one. Okay. Now, oh, can everyone see that? <laughs> yeah, you need to get rid of your bar, your bar at the top, though. I will. I will. Okay. 
So okay. welcome everyone. Um, I'm very excited about this uh, this uh, class and this particular count, um, the great backyard bird count, and you will be so happy to be participating in this. I feel like I've participated in it last year, and I teaching this has really helped me to understand the breadth of this particular count. It's just an amazing. Um, uh, citizen science project. And what I will do is I'm going to give you an overview of the count first to give you an idea of where it stands. And um, I'm going to give you a little bit of the history of the Great Backyard Bird Count. I'm going to talk about why participate and um, what information, what, what they do with the information that you that you put in and then how to participate is kind of the nitty gritty of what I'm going to talk about today. Um, we're going to do some questions and then you're going to go out and try it and then you're going to come back with, yes, it worked or, hey, I couldn't do it or, you know, something like that. And um, please put your questions in the chat. I, you know, I'm sorry that I can't answer them right as they're happening, but we'll get to them hopefully. Okay, so in terms of the history of the, um, okay, I don't know why this is not moving. That's very interesting. My my uh, slide is not going ahead. Let's see if I can get it. Okay. Um, so it's been happening since 1998, which I was surprised about. It was launched by the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. And hopefully you all have signed up for eBird through them, through the Cornell Lab. And then they did, the, they did it in conjunction with National Audubon. Um, it was the first online citizen science project, which is also referred to as community science, um, to collect data on wild birds and to display the results in real time. So the cool thing, I mean, the really amazing thing about this particular count is that you can be online watching your own entries go in, but also entries from all over the world, which is what this slide is about about is that there are a lot of countries that participate. Um, in 2009, Birds Canada joined, which was great because then it became, you know, more international. And then in 2018, 18, they decided that it would, to, in order for it to be a global project, they decided to join eBird. And eBird is the world's largest biodiversity related citizen science project um, in the world. It's an intercontinental and interorganizational effort. So between the Cornell Lab, uh, Audubon, and Birds Canada, it's, it's international, so it's very cool. And more than 100 million bird sightings are contributed every year, which is a lot of bird sightings. Um, and if you want more in more in depth information about eBird, they have a really great site that you can go to that's called the eBird Essentials. And I, I'll put that at the end there so you can see the count, the, um, the um, site to go to for that. So in 2020, so last year, almost 300,000 uh, participants participated in the backyard bird count. Uh, 27, more than 27 million birds were counted. And then 6,900 species of birds, which is almost half the amount of birds in the world. So that's pretty good. And then 194 countries participated and they're hoping that more countries participate this year. So I think that's a pretty amazing and wonderful idea that you're, you are joining all these people all over the world who are doing this count during this, these four days, the 15th through the 20th President's Weekend, which was specifically chosen for the great um, backyard bird count. So uh, where are you going to count these birds? Wherever you want to count them. That's the cool, that's a really great thing about this count. I've done two yard counts today. So I got up early, I counted in my yard, then I had lots of things to do, and then I came back and did the same count in the yard um, and got some different birds and some different numbers. And so it's okay to count the same place if that's all you can do, but you have to count at least 15 minutes. You can count, you can go walk around your town and do a count that way. You can go to a park, you can go to nature centers, you can just do it anywhere. You can go to the ocean. If you live near the ocean, drive to the ocean and do a count there. So we talked a little bit already about why you should participate. It's part of a worldwide science project, which is, has a very big impact on how we see birds. This, this is a long-term record. My records that I've, I've been putting data into eBird for about 
four years now and that all those lists are there. I can look them up anytime. Um, and also for the whole world putting in data, then that's also held. Scientists can't be everywhere all the time, you know, so it's really nice when they have all these volunteers that are helping them. So that's what citizen science is about. Um, it's also a lot of fun, which is good. You get out, you can do it with your family. I mean, this is a time of COVID, so we're not doing big groups like we have in the past, but if we, we can be careful with small groups and um, we can do it with our family. So that's really good. And then you're making sure that the birds that you have in your your particular um, area are being counted for the bird count. So those are good things. Um, Marisol, can you take, can you just briefly mention the virtual? Oh yes. Yeah. So I was just going to say that. So okay. one of the ideas that came up, no, thank you, Marco. I appreciate that. One of the things that came up at an, uh, they did a, one on the East coast, a, a overview of the great backyard bird count on the East coast. They said that one of the things that they're doing are virtual, virtual ones with their family members who are not close by. And so I'm going to try to, that with my daughter and we're going to use a, a thing on my phone called Marco Polo, but you could use Zoom on your phone, you could use, you could take your computer out in your yard if you wanted to do and Zoom on your yard with your family members and share that experience of counting the birds. They could ask questions. There are um, resources to use to uh, type birds with. So um, I thought that was a great idea. And so I called up my daughter and she lives in San Diego and we're going to do a little um, participation together so that we can have that experience together. Um, so you can access all your lists, you can use your account to report years, bird, bird year, but <laughs> you can li li do listing all year. Once you get an eBird account, you can do birds anytime. If you're out, if you're out next week and you want to make a bird list, you can put it into eBirds and it's still really important. <clears throat> and then people who are listers, life listers, they keep track of their birds on eBird. All right, I have to get a drink of water now. <laughs> okay, so what do we learn from it? <clears throat> so because things are, they're being mapped right now, right as you are counting out there in the world, you can see how, how birds are spread throughout, throughout the, the world. Um, we learn about migration, where birds are at this point in the winter time, you know, what are, what are the winter birds? What are they doing? You see the year to year changes. This year, there's a huge finch eruption <clears throat> with goldfinches and pine siskins, pine siskins in particular. And so those year to year changes are being recorded and they're very important. And then long-term trends for birds like grasshopper sparrows or birds that are threatened, birds that are increasing, these long-term trends, trends are being kept track of. And then <clears throat> what do you do? Well, you have to count birds for 15 minutes. That's it. You know, that's all that you have to do. Now you can count longer, of course, and I'm going to probably spend one whole day of this weekend birding and putting all putting those lists in. You have to keep track of your time um, and you have to keep track of the time that you are birding at. So since I did two bird lists in my yard this morning, it was very important that I put in the time that I started the first one and ended it, and then the time that I started the second one and ended it. Luckily, eBird on your phone keeps track of those things. So if you have eBird already, the eBird app on your phone, it will, it will give you a location, a GPS location, and it will keep track of your time. And then the next little part is to estimate how many birds you're looking at. Now in my yard, it's not a big problem because I can count them individually. But if you are somewhere where big flocks of birds are flying past or you're somewhere where there's a lot of waterfowl, I mean, some people ask, do we count ducks? Yes, we count ducks, we count all the birds. <laughs> and so if you see a lot of birds, like a whole mass of starlings that fly over, the way that I have learned how to count them is that I count only the very first group and then look at the size of that in my mind and then, so I count 10 at first and then I can go 10, 20, 30, 40 and estimate, you know, it's just an estimation and you just do your best, your best estimation of what that is. So that's an important thing. So we already talked about the very important thing of, of um, always, I see somebody needs to be admitted in there. Um, of Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Of, a, of having an account with the Cornell Bird Lab. And again, once you do that, you have access to lots of great things like the Macaulay Library, which is 
an amazing resource. I, I write a blog. I use that resource every, every week. I look up things on that resource. They have, they have vocalizations. They have natural history. They have lots of photographs. So it really is a great uh, thing to sign up for the Cornell Lab, and it's free. If you've already participated in, in eBird before or Merlin or Feeder Watch or Nest Watch or the CBC last year, because it was all on online also, then you're already, you already are in, so you don't have to re-sign up. And then every bird that you put into eBird or Merlin is counted for this count. So it's not like you have to do a different, a different way or method. You can write your list out and then come back and put it in the computer, but they're really recommending this year, probably the most of any year yet to just put it right directly into eBird on your cell. But if you don't have a cell, then you gotta use your computer. Um, okay, let me see if I can get this to move. Why sometimes it doesn't wanna, doesn't wanna move. Hmm. No. Okay, so this is, this is the page for starting the account. You just fill it out. It's pretty easy. It's look at just your first, your name, your last name, you choose a username, but you have to remember these, your choose your username and your password. Those are important. So what you will need for each time you bird, and I've kind of already talked about it, is you'll need a checklist for each day if you're in one place and you're birding continually. That'll be one checklist. If you move to another location, you need another checklist. And there's a, there's a process that I'll go through with you where you stop, stop birding and you'll see it's pretty easy. And then if you have, if you're birding in one place, but you take a break, then you're gonna start a new list when you come back from your break. So that's, those are important things. Um, so you wanna choose your easiest way. Again, this year, they're really stressing the eBird mobile app. The Merlin app, the Merlin bird app, which we're gonna discuss next after this slide. It's a great app. I have it on, I have that on my phone. I have eBird on my phone. I have Sibley on my phone. I mean, I have all the bird, I have Audubon on my phone. I try to use all my resources as much as I can to help me identify birds. Um, the Merlin bird app, in this case, it's really great for identification. And anytime you identify a bird on Merlin, it goes directly into the great backyard bird count for this weekend. So that's really great. But you will, you will find it's a lot easier to keep track of your checklist of birds on eBird. So that's, that's what you'll, you will want to do. Um, so here is Merlin. This is a, this is a um, screenshot of my phone using Merlin. And Merlin is free. Also, it's a free app. It's a free uh, identification app. And the first thing that it will have you do is to download a bird pack for your area. So the county people who are watching right now or anybody who's not in Mendocino County, which is where I am, they will download the birds that are in your particular area. All right, so that's really nice because you want those choices to be there when you are trying to find the bird in your yard. Then they go through this series of questions, which I think are excellent, and they're, they're worth just learning to do regularly when you're looking at birds. So this morning, I had a funny sparrow in my yard. I, mean, I knew what it was, but I wanted to see what Merlin would do with it. So it says, where did you see your bird? I put my location in there, my address in there. Then they said, what was the size of the bird? And they have these four little icons, which I think are great, sparrow size, robin size, crow size, or a duck, <laughs> you know? So I think those are great ways to separate out the birds. If you're not sure, I believe there's a little dot between the sparrow and the robin that you can check. <laughs> so if you're kind of in between, oh, it's not, you're not sure if it's robin size or sparrow size, you can check in between there. The next question, which is really important are the, are, is the color of the bird. And I love that it asks for three colors because that, again, the more questions you can ask and answer, the more likely you're gonna to get to your bird. So for this particular sparrow, I put brown, white, and black in there. Those were the, those were the what I was seeing. Excuse me, uh, brown, white, and gray, I'm sorry. And so then, um, then they ask you, 
Was the bird eating at the feeder? I love these questions. These are just great. Was it eating at the feeder? Was it swimming or waiting? I mean, that's gonna cut out a lot of birds right there. Those two questions. Was it on the ground feeding or was it in a tree or bushes? Was it on a fence? A lot of birds like to hang out on fences and they're particular types of birds um, or, or maybe they're going from the ground to the fence. So you have that kind of experience or were, are they soaring or flying? And my bird was definitely on the ground and it was scratching around. It was just doing an amazing thing. And so then the last thing that that does is that they show you a picture of what they think the bird is. So far, Merlin has been spot on for me. If there's a question from them, if they're not sure, they're going to show you more than one bird. They're going to show you three pictures, but then you have a, you've narrowed down your choice, right? It's so great. So mine was a fox sparrow and there's the picture of the fox sparrow. So that was a very nice way to, um, to have this process. It's a great process to do with kids. I see that there's some people signed up that have children that are participating. And those are great questions to ask the child that is helping you with this study is what colors do you see? Is that bird on the ground? Is it small? Is it big? You know, what is it doing? Those are all really important questions. You know, for people who are not birders who are participating in this count, this is a good way to become a birder. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say right now. You will become one. So then the next thing that I want to talk about is the eBird app, which again, very easy to download. You just put it on your phone, the eBird app from the app store. It's free. And what they have done this year is they have, they have done a great job at making it as easy as possible to use. They will also download a pack, a bird pack for you that will have a list of the birds that will be in your area. And that's, you do want that wherever you are, you want a list of the birds that you're gonna find in your particular area. And what I would recommend if you're not in Mendocino County, or if you are in Mendocino County to start with, you can do the Mendocino, um, the inland, uh, birds of Mendocino County, you can get those from Peregrine, or you can go to the coastal um, Audubon and they will up, they will give you the list of the coastal birds that you could see. If you're in Sonoma County, same thing. It would be the Sonoma County Audubon would have a list of those birds, but eBird will have that on the phone for you. So you don't have to run around and try to get that. It will be already on there. And so the first thing that comes up is this picture of the time and the start the checklist. So they're already documenting what time you're starting. You just click the start the checklist. And then the next thing that will happen is it will say, um, choose a location. And they are already locating you. Usually you don't have to do that the very first thing. You can do that at the end even. So you can skip that step. Um, this is kind of, I think that this one is that this, this particular slide was at the end. So let's skip that one and go to the next one where it says species. And they'll have a, a little checklist with a little box next to it of the species. And at the top, it'll have a space. So if you think you know what that bird is, like let's say you think it's a song sparrow and you're pretty clear that it's a song sparrow, you've already checked your Merlin, you can go to the top and start putting in song and it'll come right up and there'll be a number there. It'll be a zero and you'll, Let's say you see one, you'll put in the one. And then the next time you see a song sparrow, because maybe you have more than one song sparrow, when you start typing in song, that what you've already put in will come up and you can then change that number to two just by putting a two into your phone. Um, at the end of this process, this is what this second slide is. It will ask you to choose a location. So you'll click on that. Well, first of all, you have to say stop. Sorry, you have to say stop and it'll say, are you done birding? And you'll say, yes, I'm done birding. Have, uh, did you, is this a complete checklist of all the birds you were able to see? You're always going to click yes to that because have done your best. You have, I mean, yes, maybe you missed some birds, but you tried your best and you, you put down everything you could see. So they always want you to click yes on that. Um, then you, uh, then you, go down to where it says, let's see, choose location. I'm trying to think of what else we need for this one. Yeah, you're, I like to, they're gonna give you a GPS number for your, for where you are. And I like to title that, like if it's my yard, I wanna put, you know, uh, my yard on it so that I don't, cause if it's a bunch of numbers, sometimes it's hard when you're trying to put in your location 
and, and they give you the list. They'll, they'll keep all of your locations. They'll give you a list. And it's, I can't remember those numbers. I'm sorry. So I have to, I have to title it with a title that I know I can go back to and it's easy. So I have things like my yard. I have places at work that I bird at. I have the co coastal places I bird at. So those are all listed in my locations and you'll get that as you use uh, eBird. Um, and the last, well, here, I'm going to, this is kind of a large version of it, which is a lot easier for me to follow. But this is where, you know, you choose your location. I, see how they put our home? You can put your home in there. And it'll, you have, it'll you have 10 minutes, Maricela, 10 oh, minutes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Then they give you a map with location points. If, if you don't, if you're not sure where you are, like, let's say you're in a park, they'll give you a map and you can try to find it on that. Um, if you, you want to put your date, and if you have people with you, you want to put how many people are on there, um, how much time. Again, they're tracking the time and the distance. They're doing that for you. But if you're walking somewhere and you feel like, oh, that's wrong, you're only going to bird one way if you're going in and out. If you're doing a circle, you can bird the whole circle. Um, here's your list that I was talking about. If the, you see a bird that's not on the list, you have to write it on here where it says add species. And they're going to ask you for some information about that bird. And I recently had an experience where I clicked white-headed woodpecker by mistake, and I actually got a telephone call <laughs> from a person who I know who said, are you sure you saw a white-headed woodpecker? Well, I didn't, so I could go back and edit it, which was really great. And then this is where you click the yes and then submit. And so that list goes immediately in. Okay, after you submit your count, you can go back and edit it. Like, let's say you, you say, oh, wait, I, it wasn't 12, 12. Uh, band-tailed pigeons, it was 50. You can go back and change that number. You can share your list with other people. So I will share my list with my daughter today. And you could submit another list if you want to do that. So this, this site, www.birdcount.org, has all the information you could possibly want. There are, there are resources there, and I want to show you some of the resources. There's the Tricky Finch ID resource. There's the Sparrow ID resource. There's the Common Feeder Birds resource. These are great pictures of you, where you are. So if, because I'm in Northern California, the Pacific Northwest, when I put in sparrow ID, I'm going to put that in there. So they will give me the sparrows that I would likely see here. And that's important. So if somebody is from the East Coast watching this, they'll want to have sparrows from the East Coast on there. Backyard raptors, all of these things, you can just click the link on your computer and they'll come up for you if you are having trouble trying to, you know, if Merlin isn't doing it for you and you would like to see the whole view of all the sparrows. Um, you can get beautiful Zoom backgrounds. You can get other bird ID resources. So this is a very, I thought we could put this in the chat, Margo, maybe put the, these links or maybe after for the recording, put those in. Um, if you they have any questions. They won't be live links though. Oh, they won't be? Okay. Not if we're taking it off your slide. Okay. I mean, you so, can. You can. I can't though. Okay. Okay. So maybe I'll put them in there in the chat. So at this point, I'm hoping that we can go out. Is it time? Did I, did I give people enough time? We You're great. Go. Yeah, it's great. We could do some questions. Yep. Looks like we have quite a few. Let's see. I can't see the question. No, I don't, I don't. I'm not seeing any questions. Oh, I thought there was some in the chat. Well, I asked people to put their names in the chat. I mean, I had a oh, question I earlier, um, Maricela, about if you hear a bird and you know what it is, um, but you only hear one, but you know that you hardly ever will find one quail, do you, do you just put in one bird, even though you know it's probably not just one? Good question, Margo. Yes, you only put in one unless you want. What I do is I try to listen very carefully to see if I can hear more than one especially we were talking about California quail, when you only hear one of them, but you know there's at least 10 of them in that bush, you can only put down what you hear. And so that is very important to think about when you're listening out there. Um, but, but hearing is good. I mean, you don't have to see the bird. If you know the sound a bird makes, you can use that as that's the bird you on the list. Yes. All right. Um, so when when you go out and you don't have to go out, you can do this from your window in your kitchen, which I did do early this morning. <laughs> 
because it was really cold. And so I was in my kitchen looking out my window, counting the birds that were at my feeder. Um, if you want to do that for the next 15 minutes, that's good. That's why it's called the Great Backyard Bird Count, because you can do it right from your in your backyard. Um, so it is 2.30 now. So do we want to come back at 3? No, 2.45? Yeah. Okay, does anyone else have any new questions about going out and frying? What? Can you hear me? I just yeah. have a, oh. Yeah, I, oh, okay. Um, what was the name of the very last website you referred to that had a lot of resources? I, I didn't get it written down in time. Okay, here, we'll get it. I think you. it's the one I just put in the chat, Valerie. It's, it's the birdcount.org. Yes, birdcount.org. Oh, okay, thanks. I didn't see that. Okay, just put it in. Yeah, and you'll go to bird uh, bird ID resources or... I think yeah, it okay. Something. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. That's a great site. Thanks. Great for information. Sure. Any other questions? So, yes, I, I have one. Do any of these bird um, apps that you recommend, can you just like point your camera and it counts for you? <laughs> no, but you can point your camera and it, well, actually Merlin, Merlin will, if you point your phone at the bird and you send that bird photo, they will identify it for you. And at that case, it goes right into the bird count. So yes, you could. That's the Merlin one. Okay. I think I just yeah. uh, downloaded, but somehow I managed to download the whole West Coast bird back by accident. <laughs> No. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's all right. have more birds than less birds <laughs> yeah <laughs> I guess it. that's a good thing <laughs> yes yes okay thank Other you I, I haven't done this before so I'm new oh good yes I, I wanted to see how many people that's okay had never used okay. eBird before so. great okay everybody take off and do what you can do it looks, sounds like it's it's maybe raining some places but oh, hopefully not where you are are we going to be coming back to this website? This yes. Zoom site? You're going to come back to the Zoom, yeah, and we'll see it answer any questions people may have, or um, we do. We have a brief wrap up and just see how it went for everybody. And it'd be nice to know how many of you have done this before, or how many of you have been an eBird. We can try to get that uh, when you come back. Yeah, but I do want you to get your 15 minutes in. So you, oh, there is a drawing for Zeiss binoculars. If you do 15 minutes, you can be, you'll be entered into the drawing for the Zeiss birding binoculars. So great. Yeah. Great. So we count now? Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. Off you go. And we put it in eBird? Yes. Put it in eBird if you have eBird, definitely. Yeah. It's trying to download the bird pack for a long time. Yeah. Oh. Maybe I got the whole West Coast too. I don't know. Oh, you might have. Hi, Janine. Hi. <laughs> I'll go try. Yes. I have a question. Yes. Yes. So I have, uh, looking out my window at the kitchen table this morning, I got eBird up. I have my phone in my hand. And oh, good. I found two species. So I don't need to go outside right now. I just need to have you understand what I do now. It doesn't talk anything about the bird count on uh, eBird here. So I have a, West, a chestnut back chickadee and a song sparrow. The very first time I've ever done this. So now what do I do with this data? Just pretend I just went out now and you excuse me, now I'm returning. And, and so now I got this, well, now I got this uh, screen, but I don't know what to do with it. Oh, that's interesting. That's not my screen. I get up. But anytime you enter into eBird right now, it's going automatically into the great backyard bird count. So that is already happening, but you do have to submit it. So I'm, I'm looking where here, I'm going to bring mine up so you can see mine. Well, I did this. I, I, I noted this before the bird count, before this uh, uh, Zoom this started. Yeah. Okay, that's all right. Did submit, you start? Right? You did? Did your screen start like that? Yes, uh-huh. It did? Okay. So now you need to edit. You need to edit your checklist. And so you go to your checklist. And you go to your submitted checklist. Yeah, I see the word submit. Mm -hmm. Okay, submit. Submit. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. And then it says, where did you hear the, where, where did you bird? Okay, you? so where did you bird? Um, my yard. So you're just going to put my yard. And where do you live? Um, in Santa Rosa, 95409. Okay, so it, okay, so it should it should have the GPS. Yeah, I have an account. It it, it, my yard, manage my location, use la lawn latitude, select. It's making me crazy. Yeah, so just just put Santa Rosa, my yard, Santa Rosa, California. <laughs> I mean, they should know that. There's the hotspots. Oh, Margo, I wanted to introduce you. My sister Carly came in to see my student, my student assistant job. Uh -huh. Hi, yeah. Carly. I see you down Hello, at the bottom. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I just wanted to show you because um, she was able to come to one of our um, events and see what I do at Sonoma. So it was very exciting. <laughs> Great. Well, she's going to be playing my role in a couple of weeks, Carly. So. Oh, wow. Well, I'll have to come back for that, too. You'll, have to, you'll have to come back for that one. I have a so, big sweet pea bush right outside my window that's usually full of hummingbirds around this time of day. So I'm hoping ah. they make an appearance during this window. Yes, exactly. It's the timing. So Tim, how are you doing on yours? I'm watching your face. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I'm navigating around there. It's, I, yeah, I, it's... I claim I'm computer savvy, but <laughs> as I more I look at computers, the more off I get. It takes time, Ted. Yeah. It takes it takes some practice. It well, really does, I think. You, you, some of you guys may know about geocaching. I've mastered geocaching, but now this is an arcane language and hoo ha. <laughs> so there is a little a site, a really good site about eBird that's called eBird Essentials, and um, it's on the allaboutbirds.org. It's in there. So if you go to allaboutbirds.org, it does talk about eBird in great detail. But did you put what, whether you were traveling or stationary on there, Tim? I don't remember. No, I don't think so. I just. Yeah, you so know. you'll need to do that also. Yeah. It's usually they ha it has a, um, yeah, it'll have a protocol. It'll say traveling or it'll say stationary on it. So you want to be if sure. It, to but if it, if it tracks your mileage, it, it, it assumes you're traveling. Yes, yes, but but if you don't go anywhere, then right. it's going to say zero. Yeah, but right. you still want to just put yes. Yeah. There's some choices there for you to click on. Yeah, exactly. Especially on the computer to, if you're in the computer. I don't want to uh, monopolize all the time, but I, I moved to eBird. And it's oh no, it's okay. This is this is it's this is a great time to monopolize. In my account and my user ID, mm -hmm. and it says I've got I observed two species. And then, it, okay. then it says, and then it says uh, your species by year, and it's got two. And mm -hmm. uh, for February, it's got the two and species. It sounds like you submitted it. Uh, yeah, Tim, it sounds it. like it sounds like you already submitted it. It's already submitted and it's right. already in there. Right. Otherwise, it wouldn't show and up like that, that. Does it say accepted? And down at the bottom. Well, wait a minute. Down at the bottom, the last items on the screen. It says one species on February twelfth, my yard. And then another signal species, my yards, California. And then, then there's no, nothing. This is the data screen with all this data on it. Yes, yeah, so I had that screen. I had that screen come up too. So um, then it's, then so... it's got complete. Then it's got complete checklists on the top. It's got two species listed on the on the on the top of the screen, up up in mm -hmm. here. And, and, yes. And yes. Then, yeah, yeah. Tony, so go down. Coming? Do you have my checklist? Do you have a little thing at the bottom that says my checklists? I think so. At the bottom? Yeah, go to my checklists. So it says view all. Mm -hmm. Yes, oh, Tony's got a question, but she's muted. She's muted. There you go. 
I have one too. Oh yeah, com well it says complete checklist. Zero complete okay. checklist. Okay. Can you un unmute yourself, uh, Tony? If that's Tony. Yeah. There, Tony there you go. There you go. There you go. Oh, this is Julia. Hi. Oh, hi, Julia. Hi. Um, so I'm not seeing in my eBird, I'm not seeing um, what you were talking about earlier, where you can go through um, the checklist the, um, oh. to find out what bird you're looking at. Okay, so, um, so is that, an eBird Merlin, or is that a different app? That's Merlin. That's Merlin. Oh, that was Merlin. So eBird okay. is where, yeah, eBird is the one that has the lists and Merlin is the one that has the identification app on it. I know they really want you to use both of them. I think it would be so nice if eBird had that particular how to find your bird app with, right. with this, but they it's two different apps, so. Okay. All right, well, I'll look into that. It's pretty windy here in Petaluma, so I'm hearing birds, but I'm not seeing them. So I'll take the mm. chance to learn more about <laughs> my tools. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good idea for tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow will be not a windy day. Well, windy Julia, is hard. Julia, there's another app called BirdNet. And you can, if you're just hearing birds, you if you, you if if you're hearing 20 different species at one time, it won't work for you. But if you're hearing one bird and you don't know what it is, you can record it on this, this app and it'll it'll analyze it and tell you what it is. Amazing. Yeah. That's incredible. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, bird net. Bird net. Thank you. Thank you, Marco, yeah. for saying that. So we have bird I, I use it all the time. Those of us that use our ears a lot, that's a great one for it. Yeah. I think it's dot com. So I got so this is Tim again. Thanks for listening. Yes, so I'm, I'm, I'm still feeling like I want to throw my phone out the window. It's oh got, gosh. It's got oh, eBird, it's got my checklists and it shows on February twelfth. I, I've I identified two birds, two species, mm -hmm. and so now what do I do? I, I mean, it's like, so what is what I feel uh, that I'm looking at here? What well, I, so if, if, it, if it says that, that means that that list is already included in the backyard bird count. Now, you want to do another list. Is that your first list on eBird? That's the yes, only I list just, you have? Yes, I just uh, downloaded it this morning. Yeah. Yeah, so here's my list from this morning. You know, I have a few more birds than you do, but all that's all it's gonna oh. do. It's submitted, so it's already in the database. So you are you have one list now of two birds that's been submitted, so it's in there. So the next oh. time you start, you're gonna close out the program and you're gonna start it again. We can get it to stop <laughs> doing its thing. And uh, we're gonna start again. Uh, I just want to start, right? So I'm going to turn this off. It's going to turn off the whole thing and start it over again. Okay. And so then I'll start with a new checklist and it should, should come up with. Yeah. So it goes back to this page where I start over again. Okay. All right. And so the way I got to that was by pushing the submit button on my screen. Okay. Hmm. Are you there? Yeah. And, uh, wait a minute. So this is. I I I went all the way back to my um, yes. apps, uh, and I can now I can what's it called eBird D E eBird, and it's white. It's white with a bird in it. Oh no! I'm sorry. It's white with eBird in it. <laughs> it looks like this. I should have had that on my slide. <laughs> it just says eBird. It's white with eBird right there. I know I have so much apps, it's hard to find them sometimes between Calflora and all the bird ones. It's, and not, no, it's, under, it's, under, it's under Merlin. That's, yes. I don't want to, because I got a, a white with a bird yep. in, in the No, that's a different one. Yours that's is under what, Merlin? Right. Yeah. Yeah, mine are, mine are yeah, not together. Yeah, mine here's, here's, my, here's my start screen there. Yeah, that's that's, that's where because I, that's where I make, he's my, my Sally, he, he's following your instructions about the white with the bird on it. Oh, that's, well, that's why Merlin. he that's, that's why he got Merlin. No. 
No, I'm this sorry. Is where no, no. I this is where I recorded my um, two birds this morning going to. Oh, you did it on the... Merlin. Okay, okay, all right. So that's mm -hmm. the same. The same process with Merlin is that it goes directly into the great backyard bird count. So that that count that you did, that checklist is done. Now you have to go on to the next one. So so this is where I. I I stopped that first two birds I ever did. Uh -huh. Now I'm, mm -hmm. I just reopened Merlin, and now I mm -hmm. go on and find woodpeckers or peleated woodpeckers or whatever, and add sure, them in. Sure, here. whatever else you have. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's different than the eBird that I was talking about. eBird is the one where you have the whole list of birds, so you're going along well, I, and you're. I, 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 it asked me to download a bird pack, and so I yeah, did that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, because the reason why you downloaded the bird pack is because in order to ID the bird that you are trying right. to ID, it's got to have those birds in there. Yeah. Right. Merlin is a great app. I'm not I'm not saying don't use it. Use Merlin. If that works for you, just use Merlin and don't worry about it. I just like ha having the whole list so that I can check them off. I mean, I've been, been birding a really long time, so I need my list. <laughs> I have to have the whole list. <laughs> But you can do it one bird at a time through Merlin. That's fine. So tell, tell me, uh, so far I, I haven't gotten excited yet about this whole project. Why, oh. why am I not excited? Well, because maybe uh, you have to uh, use all this technology. <laughs> Is the technology yeah, in maybe, your way? Maybe, maybe I'm, you know, I'm not a dullard, but I, I enjoy it. We, every day we feed the birds on our fence right outside the kitchen window and I get my binoculars. Anyway, so, but th this is so, getting me a little, a little grumpy. So here. I, for, for years, I just did bird lists in my notebooks. I have notebooks yeah, and notebooks yeah. of bird lists. And to yeah, me, yeah, yeah. this is, yeah. And so it was useful for me, but it wasn't adding any information into the world record, basically. I was just keeping yeah. them for myself. Mm -hmm. And sure. when I, when I got onto eBird, then I would take my lists from my notebook and write them into eBird. So I had to do this, was it? a very tedious process for me yeah. it's so much easier to just do it directly into the phone and i i understand i definitely understand that it's not as oh i don't know i find it's fun but it may not be as fun to begin with you have to get a handle on it first yeah yeah well i'll yeah. give it some time yeah please i see there are quite a few people um shirley has her hand up um, okay Yes, I was just out there, and of course I saw um, a bunch of wild turkeys. One was looking at me from down the hill, wanted to know what I was doing. But um, I, over the years, I have um, known that there are certain times of the day that the birds come in by tens for feeding. So can I just choose those hours? Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. I would do from 3.30 to quarter to four, there's not much, but boy, oh. if you go out in my yard at 4.30, mm -hmm. you would just, you would have problems counting all of them because they're just, there are loads of them. Hmm. Yeah, you get to pick, you get to pick okay. whatever time that is. It doesn't matter. You know, they, they don't care. And, and the thing that I think is so interesting is that difference, you know, between if you go out at eight o'clock in the morning compared to 12 right. o'clock compared right. to three o'clock, you know, and you know your place. So you know yeah. when you're gonna see the most birds. So there are about four feeding times during the day. Mm -hmm. And so I can just go ahead and do a morning and then do that afternoon one and do it on a regular basis, right? Yes, oh, that's that's the best. That's the best, it shows yeah. that difference. I had that mm -hmm. difference this morning too. And I think that, that beginning of that um, observation and that understanding that birds have the rhythm, you know, they have a daily rhythm that they follow. It's, it's just a great experience, I think. I, mm -hmm. I found, I like it a lot. You know, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to sit closer. Mm. Because with my iPhone, I mean, uh, you could take a picture, but you can only zoom so much. You know, I can't get close enough. So I figure, well, if I just stay there, they come around. They don't like mm -hmm. it at first, but they come back, you know. So I'm hoping I can get close enough where I can do some good photos. That's great. It'd be nice to have good photos. Though Merlin, Merlin, you know, when you take a photo for Merlin, they can have some pretty lousy photos and come up with your bird. It's pretty good. Wow. Okay. You know, sil mm -hmm. Silhouettes, you know, really fuzzy birds. They're good. They're very good at. It. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so great. Have so fun. How does, how does this work now? If I'm I'm looking out my kitchen window for 15 minutes, 
and I complete that session, if you will, and I come back an hour later and I count and I observe again, and the same chestnut back chickadee is probably there. So where's the science in that? Seems like you're double counting. And well, but, but remember you've put your time and your place. So they know where you are doing that count. Right. And I had that same thought about it long time ago. I was thinking about that. Oh, well, wait a minute. But basically they're taking all of that into consideration. If you're, if you're birding the same spot, different times they're going to look at oh this time oh this these two birds were here oh this time these two birds were here those are probably the same two birds they're definitely going to take that into account but it might be that you see five chestnut back chickadees later you know so one of those might be the same but four of them will be different ones so, so that okay yeah, yeah it's worth it i mean i was uh -huh. amazed i had to stay around this morning so i used my feeder as an example and it, there were definitely the same birds and different birds later on. Huh. Yeah. Tim, one of the things I've always done in the past is make a manual list, keep my time, make a manual list, but then go, I don't use, I, in the past I didn't use my cell phone. I just went into the eBird so I was thinking, um, website. If you don't like the shrimp or you want to add something, some nice white fish. Yeah, that's a good idea, whitefish. Okay. Oh, I don't, you're overwhelming me with so many <laughs> Wait oh, a minute. Come, <laughs> come on, he's up now. <laughs> yeah. Didn't seem I won't even know where I am. <laughs> I'm not sure what the whitefish was about, but. I don't know what that was about. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought I was muted. No, you're not. <laughs> I've, I've never seen a whitefish fly. <laughs> no, I thought, it, I thought it was like a, uh, I don't know, something for comparison or something that oh, was, no, was my husband get. picking up some food from the Santa Rosa fish store. Oh, <laughs> gosh. I'm so sorry. I assumed I was no. muted. I was listening. Okay, I will that's mute. Right. So that's a very good thing that Margot said. And for years, I did not feel comfortable using eBird. And so I did my lists in my notebook and transferred them. But you have to write your date and location. Yeah. And when you end, you know, your time you start, your time you end. Otherwise, again, it's not very scientific. If you don't have those pieces of information, it's hard to use those data points because they use all those data points, the, the location, the time, the duration, you know, those are really important mm -hmm. things to have as data points. Um, so that's one thing that I try to do. I also put the weather in. And even this morning when I was writing um, about, I had a lot of juncos this morning, dark-eyed juncos, and I put in, they're starting to sing. And I think that's a really good piece of information to have in there. So the next time I go back to that list next year, when I look at it, I can say, oh, they were starting to sing. Are they singing now? Or, you know, anyways, that's my science. Marisol, can you, can you um, get out of your screen share so we can see the yes. whole gallery because yes. i can't see everybody at once there we go all right okay okay so a lot of you are back are there other questions i have a question in that i i used ebird i hadn't used it before and after uh, i submitted my birds but it said i didn't have i don't have any list i don't have any submission or something oh really <laughs> Did I leave some? Okay. Yeah, no checklist, not submitted. So I don't know what happened to it. So sometimes it won't accept the list if you haven't filled out all the data points, if you haven't put the location in, uh -huh. if you haven't put the, the fact that, you know, that question that says, is this a complete list? Did you click that? Yeah, I, I believe I did okay, that. Good. Yes. I don't know if okay, that's good. To go back to that list anywhere. There is. There is. So you're going to go to edit. So let's see. Explore. So are you back on the front screen again? That looks like this. <laughs> um, then you're no, go to I'm on the screen this. that says V Hobbig or eBird. And it's giving me some options like about eBird settings and things. And but I don't find home anywhere. Hmm. Um, <laughs> I, I wonder if it didn't download. <laughs> Sorry, I know. And this is what we were just talking about. You know, one of the things that Margo was suggesting was to write a list on a piece of paper, put your yeah. time on it, make sure you put your time on it, and then go to your computer and do it on your computer first. Mm -hmm. Again, 
The phone is the easiest way yeah. once you have the, once you know how to I'm put everything to the in. beginning now to start a check. Oh, good. Okay. Okay, good. So at the bottom of start checklist, it should say um, my, my eBird, right? Let's press yeah. that. Okay. Okay. Does it have anything in there? Um, it's downloading. Uh, yeah, it has five species. Oh, okay. Wait. That's not even today, though. Did you use eBird another time? I didn't. I just downloaded. I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> that is very strange. So this is what comes up when I press that button. It has all my lists. It says Mendocino. Does it have your county on top? Your right county? Sonoma. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, good. Has your county. Okay. How about at the bottom of your phone? Do you see checklists? Yes. Okay, press that. Do you get locations or a location? No, I just get no checklist to submit. Ah. Oh, to submit. Hmm. That was to submit. Hmm. This is hard. It's hard to do without somebody sit, really sitting next to you. It, it, well, it helps you through it. Try it again. Is. Another totally time. get that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah um, no, we all need the teenager to fix this one. Yeah. <laughs> or, or the 30-year-old. Well, look, like they look like there's some on here. <laughs> Can I throw okay. a quick question out? Yes. Uh, on the likely species list on eBird, some of the uh, names have red dots after them, some have yellow semicircles, and there's no legend yes. to tell us what that means. Okay, so the red dots are ones that are, are not likely to be seen it doesn't mean you won't see them but they're not likely to be seen here i'll put this up here see if i can see some of those yeah it's hard to use it when you're not really using it <laughs> yeah <laughs> it does, i'm just going to start a checklist <laughs> okay yeah really? Really? So, yeah those ones the snow goose, on my case, it's snow goose and got Ross's goose and cackling goose. They're going to want more information about those ones with the red dots on them. They're not as commonly seen. All right. And if you scroll down, there's yellow. I assume those are not rare, but not common. Right, right. I wish they had the, well, if you go online on your computer, that information will come up about those dots, but I don't know why. They don't have it here. And the eBird Essentials is really a good thing to look at because it has, I mean, it's, it can, you can take a three hour course on eBird, by the way. <laughs> Some of us- Now you're really it. gonna send Tim around the bed. I know. <laughs> right, right, right. But you know, I didn't, I didn't do any courses on eBird until I had been Me using neither. it for many years. So, <laughs> so it's all right, you can still use it. It's just that you can get more out of it. Yeah, those yellow ones are unusual, but you can see them. Definitely. The red ones are not, not seen very often. Are there any other um, questions? Because we're, we're running out of time. So I see, yes, well, Janine. I see Janine has a question. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's pretty quiet out there, <laughs> but yes. there were some raptors and I saw two red tails, hawks, but I saw something else and I'm not sure what it is. And I used Merlin to try and identify it but I'm still not sure, so do I just leave it out? No, no. any bird that you see that you don't know, you're gonna put hawk species or occipiter species. There's a, there's a, a category in there, sparrow species. There's a category for those, yeah. Because those, those have to be counted too. So let's see if we can find at the very end. If you put in, so here's my list, right, for my birds. If you, you can't put really in see at the it. top, oh, here. There you go. See if I can see. It's that page that has the list. Well, if you're in speaker view, you should be able to see it, Janine. Yeah, I see it. Okay. So yeah. if you go to the top and you put hawk, do you think it was a buteo or an occipiter or a falcon? Well, I think it might have been a falcon. I, it could have been a peregrine, but I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's a good, that's good. So you can put falcon up here in that species name code. Okay. Put falcon in there. And then underneath that, there'll be falcon species as a category. Okay. 
Uh, our, we're out of time, Maricela. I'm sorry. And, and we, Maricela, we'll stay around, but I want to respect everybody's time and just uh, let you know that that this is our first event of our spring series. We've got just about almost 20 remaining until the beginning of May. So I hope you'll go and look at the um, cei.sonoma.edu slash calendar. Molly, would you put that in the chat for me? Oh yeah, I can put a link to the calendar in the chat. Thank you. And um, you'll see what the other events are and sign up. There's some really wonderful presentations going on this year. So I'm hoping you will join us for those. The next one is about newts and garter snakes. And it's actually fascinating. So I'm hoping to some, see some of your faces there. I have a quick question and, before we close. If I okay. Um, Molly looks like she's really super smart and she's young and she's got probably about a, a lot of energy and brain cells working. <laughs> do you think she could do a demo for those people who are asking, how do I get on to Merlin and how do I do the ID? All right, I'm gonna hang on a second to that, Shirley. Can you stay on a little bit, Molly? Yeah, I could stay on a little bit. Okay, I mean so now, I just mean in the oh. future. Just when, when you know, you can sign up to be on the Zoom with her and then she can just walk everybody through it. <laughs> well, we'll talk, I'll talk with her about that. She's our intern for the Center for Environmental Inquiry. So I will talk to Molly and we'll see how that we'll might work. Through you, Molly. <laughs> okay, thank you all very much. And if you want to yeah, stay around, please you. do.